Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It's time for a new map. This one is called Cholera 23, and I don't mean the, well, I guess it's not technically a disease. Hopefully no one dies of cholera, and especially not on this exact map. It looks like it would be from Frostbite, though. This has a lot of ice-looking stuff and interesting little formations with poppily things on them that I don't know what they are. But it is a cool-looking map, and it does have a ton, a ton of reclaim so this game should escalate very quickly so as far as our players go we are at the high end of the average joe's ranking well no there's enough guys in here that this could technically be a top ranked game a lot of 1800s with a 1300 1400 mixed in so on the northern side we have postal and mcom then noob fried rice and Arrow24, that is Seraphim, Cybern, Cybern, Cybern. Lots of Cybern love today. And then on the southern side, we have Mephi, Isogen, uh, Baby Groot, I think we know someone who watched a good movie recently, and Westmania, who we actually saw last game. That is Aeon, UEF, Aeon, and Cybern. So four out of eight players, half the map, is Cybern. Well, should be a lot of sneaky business happening this game, if nothing else. So this is all water here. Uh, we got a little bit of land peeking up in a couple of places. Looks like somebody slipped with a pixel brush actually right there. Um, overall, it looks like a fairly well-designed map. Uh, we got two people in the very, very back who are pretty much... Uh, they can both operate as late game slash air players if they so choose, but there is a good amount of spread on this map. Not all of this is water, this is terrain features here, so we have access around the outside edges, we have islands to hop across out here with some outlying mexes, and we have a wide open battlefield in the center with a symmetrical placing of spawns. So, very, very different map. I'm interested to see how it plays, and I am anticipating a ton of spam, because to cover this many avenues of access, basically you have to spam. It is a requirement. You can't just build point defense in one area, because then units can cross on the other side of the plateau from you, and your point defense can't hit them, and it's basically completely useless. So... Let's go ahead and jump into here and see where these guys are taking us. We do have some early aggression. We've got mech marines from Baby Groot heading around the outside edge. Those are probably, well, they're just parked for now. Probably heading over that way in anticipation of labs from the other team. Got to guard that expansion. And we've got a lot of manual reclaim coming in. We have large rocks, we have clumps of rocks, and we have these unidentified objects here that's... I've actually never seen that texture pattern in Subcom before. I'm wondering if somebody imported something new. And I don't know what the little sprinkles are either. We'll just have to keep an eye on those. Maybe they're reclaimable. I don't even know that they are reclaimable. We'll just have to find out. We will find out together as we learn about new things. So we've got a bunch of air coming out early. Noob Fried Rice is pushing a scout and an interceptor. We've got air from Postal. And then we do have... Oh, no, that's the same scout. Okay, so the guys on the south have not built their air factories yet. We've got one down here, one that is producing engineers in the rear. Westmania is not yet pushing any combat units out, but he does have his own air factory going down as well. One thing that I have noticed that is very, very common among 1,500 plus players, pretty much everybody builds their own air factory. There is no, oh, but you should be the air player and it's your fault that I died to a mercy snipe. No, it is everyone build their own cloud of interceptors and one person go for ASF as soon as he possibly can. And to me, that seems like a better idea than strictly relying on one person for complete and total air control because that's a risky situation. If you get a two versus one on air, you have one person's whole eco and another person's third of an eco, I don't know, whatever they're not devoting to land units, you can easily have your air player get overwhelmed in the early game, and I really wish these guys would have been a little more aggressive early on, because this expansion would not exist had those mech marines run all the way around the outside edge. 
So Baby Groot, be more aggressive. That is the biggest lesson that pretty much anybody can learn about this game. Here is some aggression. We have two Mantis coming down there, gonna come toe to toe with a group of Auroras. They did get within closing range of the guns, but unfortunately the firing pattern was screwed up from the terrain and there are enough Auroras that it won't really make a difference. That Mantis is going to die and it will die horribly in fiery plasma. Here comes the bombers. Inevitable that we would see some T1 bombers. We're gonna have one kill here and a little bit of damage going down on that engineer. The bomber is gonna circle back around and lay down some damage on this radar. Excellent target, but I, I actually I don't know. I probably would have hit the engineers. I think it would have hit the engineers. Let me slow down just a little bit, folks. Um, I think I would have gone for the engineers. The three engineers would have been a more mass value, a higher mass value target, and you would have damaged some power generators, possibly letting you snipe them later on. But that's just me. Maybe he also wants to do some sneaky business, but the radar was immediately built by those three engineers. So nothing was really gained from that bombing run other than a minor inconvenience for West Mania. So Isogen is building some air. Isogen, Isogen, I don't know how to pronounce that name. He does have some interceptors up and it is a roughly even amount to what the other guys are holding. So I think the air situation is going to stay about the same, at least for the early game. And as anticipated, there are tons and tons of units coming down. We've got MCOM and Noob Fried Rice pulling their commanders down towards West Mania, and they've brought their units with them. It is a double team. It's official, folks. And they are going to plow right over this right hand side. I always hate it when build power goes down and bad things happen in a situation like that. Looks like these guys are also stealing some of the reclaim down here. T1 bombers coming in for the kamikaze run. That is always a good idea versus a field of auroras because auroras have super low health and basically anything that touches them destroys them. They get a slight case of the plague or cholera or whatever and they pretty much just fold up, shrivel up, and die. Which is... Good for everyone else because that range can be brutal at some times. One thing that I am looking at here, there is so much water on this map. I'm surprised we're not seeing more runarounds from the Auroras and the T1 artillery because the Seraphim T1 artillery could actually jump all the way around into the back side of the base. That is a convenient plateau in the back there. It does prevent full on rear penetration but it is not so enough so that it cuts off the units completely. That is actually something that is asymmetrical enough that it's actually game changing because there's less land in the back. Maybe it totals out to the same. It seems like the northern side has a little bit better protection on its flanks than the southern side. May not be a totally balanced map, but it is new and cool looking and I think we should give it a chance. And besides, if you play it some and you determine that there is a problem through a multitude of games with different people and one side is winning more than the other, then you just contact the map maker and hopefully they will rebalance it so that it works. We do have a triad going down in the corner there. It is going to get taken out by a T1. Nope, nope. An assisted build. It is going to come up. And that is going to force Arrow 24 back. Just enough units coming on location to stop that ACU assault. And now we have a triad online, which is going to be a good area denial tool. I don't know that the other four are necessary, but they're going down regardless, so we're just going to deal with them. Got T1 Bomber out on the outside edge. It has spotted these mech marines that have been out here forever and this tank, which is driving in the edge of the water. I think the textures are not very well aligned on this map. Um, this map has a ton of potential. I'm seeing a few problems with it. Maybe it is a first draft that someone made to test out a new idea, but it looks pretty freaking brilliant. I do like it just right off the bat. Maybe it's the color scheme. Maybe it's how this is playing out with all the T1 spam and different areas that you can run across, but there is something about it that I definitely do like. Do you have some units in the back that successfully ran by? 
West Mania let those few slip through. I think there's gunships over here, though, so hopefully that will be able to get picked off before it actually does any damage to anything. Gonna lose an engineer, but losing an engineer is not the end of the world unless it's that first T3 engineer out of the air factory, and then you can't build SAMs and T3 power and have to stop your air production, and it makes you want to pull your hair out. So, let's not do that. Um, we've got just a little bit of T2 on the field. Not too terribly much. We have a single Rhino heavy tank right there. And it looks like MCOM is ramping up towards T2 production. He's got a lot of Mantis building, but he has a fair bit of assistance on that T2 factory. Uh, actually, no support for factory upgrades. So, continuing the T1 theme. Got a Viper moving down towards the south. You cannot be Cybern and play a game and not build a Viper. It just is not ethical. T1 Bomber coming in for a run, but that is immediately going to get stomped on by that cloud of interceptors. Arrow is dropping an upgrade. Not sure what it is, and the indicator is not on, but it is an arm upgrade. He already has guns, so I'm going to assume that that is T2. And it looks like we've got a lot of units headed around the outside edge from Baby Groot. Baby Groot is going to be stopped in his tracks though I feel like. Lobos are on the case. They will be able to wipe out that T1 point defense eventually but between the T1 point defense and the four, count them, four T1 bombers in action overhead. I don't think that those units will make it very far. There is a mobile flak in the back though so you need to stay away from that with your cloud of interceptors and here comes T2 gunships onto a commander. No! There is a flak there and it's going to kill off quite a few of those gunships before it goes down. There's still enough, though, to be a danger to the comms. So comm is going to... Heh <laughs> comms, comms. He is going to have to run back to the water. I don't know if the water is actually deep enough to hide a commander in, though. It looks like it is just an ankle-deep puddle. But he does have a little bit of air assistance coming down from his teammates. Noom Fried Rice sacrificing the few interceptors that he has to drive back those remaining gunships and that will save the life of his teammate. Excellent team play there, my good sir. It is always good to have someone who has your back on your team. So we've got T2 units moving across from MCOM. It is going to totally wipe out all of this expanding area down here. COM basically owns the entire right-hand side of the map. There is a tremendous group of gunships coming through from Isogen but with the flak that is surely accompanying this, I don't see it. There's a T1. Maybe the flak has not reached the southern portion yet. There is the closest flak right there. These T2 gunships are going to be able to do a whole lot of damage before they can be stopped. So this could get slightly problematic for this land force. There is a TML and a second TML. Looks like we're going for a tack snipe. I don't know how successful that will be. If it's against the Cybern Commander, then yes, very, because he only has 10,000 health, but it does have to cross over enemy units in order to hit him. So I would think that he will have plenty of notification that there is something terribly, terribly wrong, and he should move his commander. So I have said so a lot, and so is a bad word to keep repeating, so I need to smack myself in the face and get over that. Um, we've got a lot of units moving in from the... I totally misspoke because I was looking in the wrong place. All right, Baby Groot has got his units moving in from the left towards the right on the north side of the map. For those of you who are directionally challenged, like I am, hopefully I have made it clear what area of the map we're talking about. Uh, T2 tanks mixed with flak, a good, well-balanced force. It's encountering mostly T1. We do have a few units coming into the base, but they are going to encounter the ACU, so that is not a problem. They will die horribly, but not if the Corsairs start team-killing everything in the base because they're auto-firing on units walking through. I think those two Corsairs actually did more damage than all of those units put together, and here comes the classic military strategy of the pincer. We have units hitting from the north and the south that is going to have a devastating effect on that group of power generators. If only they were actually firing at the power generators. There goes the hydro. I don't think at this point in the game it's going to make that terribly much of a difference, but it is nonetheless a loss for yellow. That's a nice little group of pillars you got there, bud. Shame if something happened to them, such as Ilshiva's coming down. I doubt that is going to last a long, long time right there. If nothing else, the Corsairs will take them out. We do have Cerberus turrets going down in the back. 
and actually two back bases. There's a strat bomber. We have T3 air, a strat bomber and jesters. This is truly all tiers to the attack. That was basically an attack order issued for Isogen. And why is the air player on the front lines with a fairly unupgraded ACU? That is the question for all times. Whoever can come up with an answer to that one deserves an award because I see absolutely no reason for this to be happening. Regardless of the air situation, Strictly the amount of units in the area poses a great threat to this ACU and is an absolutely critical commander since it is in charge of basically all of the air forces on the field at the moment. Between the Corsairs and the Jesters and the Strat Bomber and the, I think the Jet, oh, no, ew, it's going to be the, I'm not sure. I think it was maybe that Corsair that just died. I think the ACU blew right before the strap bomber hit. Whoever killed him, he's dead. And that is all that matters. All of the air for the southern team is going to go poof. But thankfully, Mephi has got T3 online. He did not really build... Oh, there's another strap bomber to the face. Baby Groot is building like his life depends on it because it does. There's Flak. We now have four ASF. I was about to say air control is lost for the southern team, but early air was in the hands of Isogen. And late air was in the hands of Mephi, and Mephi is still alive, so there is still a chance. We have T3 from the north as well, as evidenced by that strap bomber, but there are no ASF online except for one. So right now, as of this moment, southern team has air advantage, but I do not know how long that will actually last. These jesters are having a heyday back here. Not very many kills on them, but they do have a couple. They are mowing through all of those T1 engineers that are coming through. I would be curious to know how much reclaim came... Oh, oh, oh. Were those reclaimable? Yes, they were, because all of the little um, Petri dishes with sparkly things in them, I don't know what they are. Judging by the scale of the ACUs, it could technically be craters, and, you know, they're just small craters, but whatever. They are gone, so they are reclaimable. We do have Mantis coming in for a base invasion. You might want to call the police, buddy because your home is being thoroughly invaded by little crawly insects and they are terrifying and scary and you should probably kill them before they use their little shooty guns attached to their faces to eliminate all of your build power. And the mayhem continues. We have more T1 spam locking down this area. It is going to force out the red, hopefully kill all those things off before they do too much damage. So much Medusa, many Medusa. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen all Medusa spam from a Cybern player. Like, that is new to me. But I, I'm not going to judge because I, I don't know. That many Medusas is honestly kind of terrifying. Because they do have the stun effect on T1 and T2. And they do fantastic blanket damage versus moving armies. So dodging back and forth doesn't really do you a whole lot of good versus medusas they are going to hit where they are going to hit regardless of whether that's on top of your unit or not and here comes the suiciding loyalist you don't come to think of it loyalist is actually a fairly accurate name for what these guys do because basically you run in for close range combat they blow up and they stun everything around them with a kamikaze emp weapon and yeah that sounds like a loyalist to me they do have good dps and good health though they are going to mow through these t1 units fairly effectively Kind of like an upgraded Titan. It is the Titan, or it is what the Titan wishes it could be and sadly never shall. Interesting point of trivia for those of you who are not around for Vanilla Subcom, although come to think of it, I was not either, so I probably shouldn't be talking. But I do know this from later information. The Titans were eventually, or originally designed to have a tack pack launcher on their backs. The, if you look at the original cover art for the game and some of the other stuff, they had a model that had the uh, rocket pack on the Titan, and the Loyalists were intended to be a direct counter to the rocket pack on the Titan with their boomerang, with their boomerang TMD. I don't know why I'm stumbling so much today. I cannot seem to talk straight, and it seems to be happening more often recently. Maybe I need more sleep. I don't know. But West Mania is doing a fantastic job dodging all of these T1 bombers. He has been shedding health for quite a while now, but he has been doing so while vetting and dodging around in order to minimize his risk. So he has done a ton, and I do mean a literal crap ton of damage 
to all of these T1 units passing by. Thankfully, the ACU cannot be stunned by Medusas. And he is doing a pretty dang good job of helping lessen the threat to the home bases. Now, in the bottom corner here, we have a Soul Ripper nearly complete. You may have noticed this ASF fight going in the corner. You probably thought I missed it, but I did not. I'm just rambling on about other things. That was scouted. The bug was scouted by the Northern team. They thought they had enough ASF to go kill it, and they tried. And since the ASF prioritize attack units over ASF, since you're having an air battle over the Ripper, basically this acts like a damage sponge, and it allows a lesser amount of ASF to triumph over a greater force. That Ripper is going to come online. Bam, there it is with the liftoff. And look at the veritable buffet of veterancy that is out on the map. It is T1 units as far as the eye can see, and basically that's one shot, one kill, yummy, yummy veterancy for such a creature as the Soul Ripper. All he has to do is fly over here and take out all of these Medusas for essentially infinite HP. We do have tack launchers online. They must have been used because they're both empty, but I don't really see what they could have been used on unless maybe some mechs or strategic target sniping. That is my bad for not watching too carefully. There's a firing sequence. We will see where that shot is located. Uh, looks like it is heading for Baby Groot. Hopefully Baby Groot will move because I would be incredibly, yeah, there he goes. I would be incredibly depressed if a single tag missile killed Baby Groot while he wasn't paying attention. That is pretty much the single most embarrassing way that you can possibly die, especially when that tag missile is flying over lots of friendly units. Soul Ripper is nomming down on all these T1s in the bottom here. We got T1 Engineers, we got T1 Medusas. It's basically indiscriminate slaughtering at this point. And there is the veterancy. Apparently it was at 74, or 70 um, T1 kills. I think, theoretically, this Ripper could actually come over here and kill all of the T1 bombers while they're on the ground with its rocket packs because the T1 bombers will not automatically attack the Soul Ripper, but the Soul Ripper will attack them on the ground. This is going to be kind of hilarious. I don't think Mune Fried Rice will be able to survive this. He has a single Sam, a second one coming online, and now the full force of that Soul Ripper is coming down right on the head of his ACU. He tries to throw down some shields, I think. Nope, more Sams. Uh, that is a shield down. If you can get enough shielding up, bam, there goes the ACU. If you start with enough shielding, you can build shields and kind of sort of protect yourself from a Soul Ripper for just a little while, but that blanket damage is so hard to get away from. There is a Monkey Lord. I don't think that Monkey Lord is going to do too terribly much with the Soul Ripper in the air, but it does exist, and I feel like I should tell you guys about it as it's heading around to the left. We'll have to see what happens with that. We got assistance going... Ah, assistance ping. T2 shield generator. Excellent idea. It will probably help you out in a snipe. So, uh, Mephi was using Hives for all of his build power. He's very, very low on HP, and he does have his own Monkey Lord. Hip hip hooray! There is not an unopposed T4 coming into the base. Um, he was using Hives for 100% of his build power on his Air Factory, which is kind of a cool thing to do because it is a very nice way to consolidate a huge amount of build power, but also he did not have any shielding on it, and a group of Corsairs earlier in the game came by and just took out every single one of those Hives, and so his air production went way, way down for an extended period of time. He does have a few ASF now, and he is able to cover his Soul Ripper, if ever so briefly. But for now, the situation is good. He's raining damage down upon the face of Arrow. Sounds like someone insulting a Greek god. I don't think Arrow was actually a god, unless it was like A-R-E-O, but that is a rabbit trail that I probably need to get off of. Postal is building Sam's like his life depends on it, because it does, and there goes. Yellow's commander. Looks like that Soul Ripper is headed in a beeline towards that Monkey Lord. He should be able to damage it enough that it will not really do anything when it hits the base. And we do have Mephi's Monkey Lord intercepting it. So right now, even after the cataclysmic collapse 
of the right side, the southern team appears to have made a full recovery and may actually win this game. They've got a vast horde of T1 units over on the right hand side, killing off these almost upgraded T2 mexes. Ouch, what a loss. That was like 80% on the T3 upgrade. And that is a whole lot of mass to bite the dust. And yeah, T4 is going to go down, about to meet its maker. That 4,000 DPS on the main cannon of the Monkey Lord is a brutal tool to bring to bear on an opponent. Couple that with the, with the other 3,300 or so from the Soul Ripper, and that's bad news for anybody. Especially if you have that tiny, tiny amount of HP that the Monkey Lord does. Okay. So, a slight lull. There is not an explosion anywhere, and I don't think that's happened in a very long time. This entire game has pretty much been one constant engagement of just tons and tons of spam. Not even really any great amount of T3. Calm has some T3, but not really that much. We pretty much went from T2 to ASF and T4s. No love for the T3 stage, really. We do have a handful of Loyalists on the field, but nothing very, very significant. All right, Mephi is getting his upgrades on his hives. He's throwing down another T3 power generator, and his mass income looks very, very good. 231 per tick versus 184 and 193 on the north side, and then Baby Groot trailing at a measly 178. But hey, look at West Mania. At least you're not him. He has got a whopping three mass and 500 power under his belt. But I guess that's all you need for some overcharging, and he's just going to have to make do with that. He does have some engineers out and about. Maybe he'll pick up some extra reclaim, and that will get him something. But for now, it looks like he's just got his ACU. Let's check the kill count on that. 75 kills and still alive on that ACU. Nicely done, West Mania. If I'm not going to die, I want to do that much damage as I'm not dying. All right, so we've got some ASF closing in on the Soul Ripper. They are strictly targeting the Soul Ripper, which I think is a mistake. They have corrected it. They're now engaging the ASF because if you kill the ASF, you're no longer using losing your air units, and then you can attack the Soul Ripper safely. I cannot tell you how many times that I have seen someone lose their entire air force over a single T4, and you may say, well, that Awasa would have done a lot of damage, and it, we prevented it from hitting the land, and it costs so much mass to build that. Well, you don't understand if you have an engagement. I know this isn't that big, but if you have an engagement of 300 versus 300 ASF, and you throw an Awasa into the mix, and the person who has the Awasa loses the Awasa, but in turn wins air control and keeps two thirds of his air force, you're pretty much mass ahead at that point, plus you have air control. So you can just build another Awasa, who cares? And then they don't have enough to stop you. So the Soul Ripper has come back to base. It's got 8K health, and there's a tiny, tiny handful of ASF still on the field. Ah, Red still got a few. He is hoarding them up in the northern corner. I think that Soul Ripper has actually lost enough health that if it ventures too far out again, it will perish. All right, Monkey Lord's headed back to base, Soul Ripper's in base, and it looks like things have actually kind of stabilized. I thought we were going to see a quick end to this game once the southern team came back with such roaring force, but Calm has actually gotten a pretty good group of loyalists online, enough to definitely challenge this group of T1. There are T3 Mobile Sam's in there, and my voice is breaking constantly, I don't know why. Titans and T3 Mobile Anti-Air. Because apparently Percival's are for suckers. We've got ASF still grouping up. A mighty line of Monkey Lords building, but only with one T3 engineer, so not really that quickly. And no endgame solution that I can see from Postal. We are going to see some build power loss for MCOM down here in the bottom corner. No great loss, three T3 factories. That is going to leave a fair bit of mass down here in this corner for whoever can come reclaim it. I think I am sure that those loyalists would be able to kill this entire group. 
There are four loyalists matched to four titans, which wins hands down, and then three more loyalists to a tiny handful of T1 units. So that is a net win. I think red should just run him over and prevent this drop, but here comes three bricks, so it is now too late to do that. Bricks and a fat boy on the field. That is going to put more weight. I don't know, even know what kind of metaphor I'm going for here. That is going to weight the southern attack capability quite heavily. Um, I don't think the north really has anything to deny that. They have a half-built spider and a nearly-built spider. Two monkey lords may be able to do some damage, but there are two answering monkey lords from Mephi, and then a fat boy coming up from Baby Groot. I do like that name, Baby Groot. It's fun to say and a fun reference, so works on a multitude of levels. Titans are so shiny when they're taking fire. The shield flashes and the lights flash, and it's basically like a little laser show. But sadly, the laser show is short-lived because titans suck, especially versus loyalists. Thankfully, the loyalists can kite back. Yes, I'm saying kite. They are in the middle of a bunch of units, but they are kiting the brick, so it still technically qualifies as kiting. Monkey Lords are now in position on the front line. Fat Boy is rapidly moving up towards the front. Got one spider online. Things are starting to look a bit dicey. And there's a nuke. Holy cow. Mephi is dropping a nuke in addition to three Tech 4 units. That is a lot of mass at work with a lot of build power and it is showing very nicely. Postal, let's take a look at his upgrades because I have a sneaking suspicion that he's going for Telemazer. He's got resource allocation and no Mazer, so I was completely and totally wrong about that. Please forgive me, but hopefully he will do something interesting shortly in order to make up for my errors. What am I talking about? That's my responsibility. All right, Fatboy is going across and here's our measure of the water. Just enough water to prevent land units from crossing. It's like halfway up the tank tread on the fat boy. Yeah. So it is water as a functional barrier and not water as a place to stick your commander and hide. Which is actually kind of an interesting map idea. It leaves your commander just as exposed as a land map does, but it does not let all land units pass over the entire map. I approve of this idea. All right, Fat Boy is going to start laying down some fire on that Monkey Lord, which is immediately going to turn tail and start running directly away. Sadly, there are two Monkey Lords here that are going to pursue. And that was a nice control K there of all those T1 units. Prevent that veterancy, that's what it's all about. Got a transport full of engineers coming down towards the southern side. Looks like those guys are going to drop right in front of the bricks. So not the best plan. I think you should get a refund on that plane ticket because it has left you in an extremely undesirable location. Here comes the firing pattern. Bricks are so slow to turn, but kaboom. Bye-bye all engineers. Not a single mass was reclaimed that day. Fat Boy is taking up residence on top of the plateau, which technically should increase the firing range of the Fat Boy, but since this is subcom and range rings are static things, it does not. It is kind of a cool fortified position, though, if it chose to stay there, and nope, it is going to trek back down the hill. Kind of an odd angle for that thing to be traveling at. Subcom is such a pretty game as far as the time it was created and the amount of work that has been done on it. It still looks really good, but some of the mechanics in this are a little bit sketchy. It kind of is starting to show its age a little bit more aggressively. All right, got a whole bunch of strap bombers coming around the backside. Those are stealthed Cybran strap bombers, but unfortunately they were scouted, so I don't think they're going to get very far. Blue has his ASF way out of place. Mephi is right on target, folding his ASF so gently around the ooey gooey delicious center of Cybern Strap Bombers. That is going to be a total loss of all bombers with nothing killed 
and a complete air save by Mephi. Well done, my good sir. Air gods would be proud of you. Arrow, if you choose to speak that way. We've got more strap bombers online, as well as more monkey lords building for MCOM. Hopefully he will be able to come up with something that will end this game very, very soon. Postal is also slinging strap bombers around the map. Little bit of harassment never hurt anybody, and what the crap is Westmania doing? He is building TAC launchers out on the island under a radar with a stealth unit right next to him while protecting his T2 transport for later escape. Kind of a cool deal. This monkey lord is rolling into the base unopposed. It got all the way around the back edge and has now hit the base without getting scouted. Westmania saying, still a monkey lord because apparently he saw it in the back. There's a Soul Ripper right over here that should be put to use right about yesterday because this Monkey Lord is doing way more damage than it ever should have with a Soul Ripper sitting literally right there. That Monkey Lord should be dead and now this Soul Ripper is going to cause massive collateral damage to this base while it's trying to kill that Monkey Lord. The nuke, the nuke is almost loaded. It's so close! Come on! Launch! Before the Monkey Lord sees it! All it has to do is kill that power generator and... No! It was opening to launch and... And then there goes the nuke. It's so sad. Two Monkey Lords. The red has also come from the south side. How could this game go so terribly wrong when everything was going so right? Baby Groot! is in fear of his life and for good reason. He is fleeing in terror towards the shielding of Mephi's base. Mephi's got his running shoes on. He is gonna get a head start. Kind of like the old joke goes, you don't have to outrun the bear. You only have to outrun your friend. And looks like Baby Groot is going to make the sacrifice and try to deal some extra damage to those monkey lords in his death. Unfortunately, there was not a connected overcharge. Looks like the Monkey Lords are going to get taken out by that Soul Ripper. Here comes Strat Bombers. No! Mephi's down to 6,000 health. Three Strat Bombers. He's got a shield. He's building another. That shield's going to get taken down by the Strat. I can't see. And there's the nuke. His ASF are sitting over to the side and not killing the Strat Bombers. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it forgot Omni. Well, that's a good excuse, but you had complete and total air domination. If you would have just issued a move order in the general direction of your ACU, your ASF would have done the rest. I think I can officially label that the strategic facepalm of the game. I cannot believe that the South did not win that. That is utterly flabbergasting. Goodness. Wowzers. All right. Well, Orange has given away his position. I think that is going to be the end of the game. It was a good one. I am very happy with this game. I am highly entertained. Thank you to Postal for sending that one in. That was both some of the best little intricacies that I've seen in a while and some of the worst failures that I've seen in a very, very long time. The only thing that could possibly make this funnier is if he landed his ACU and got TAC missiled as Westmania was running. Come on, do this just for me. Jo oh, that's a mazer. Ha! <laughs> TAC missile him. There's the launch, but it's not going to be close enough. Oh, wide miss on that one. And Postal gets the final kill, Commander on Commander, as the only honorable way that you can end a game. You know that you gotta get that com on com kill in there. All right, guys, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that game. Again, the map is Cholera 23, K-O-L-O-R-A. As you can see up there in the top right corner, download it, give it a play. Tell the map maker what you think and what you think can be improved because I think this map has a lot of promise. A little bit reclaim heavy for my taste. I think I would enjoy some play on it, but it's going to tech up very rapidly. Those guys are picking up like 10,000 mass in the first 10 minutes with all of those rocks around there. 
Scales up super fast, but a well laid out map. So we're going to end this here because it is, of course, the end of the game. I will want to mention, though, we are going to be doing a Facebook discussion today. Any questions that you may have, suggestions, replays that you want considered, go to the Facebook page. There is a link in the description to the Brink of Insanity page. Click it. Give it a like if you so desire. And uh, we'll have the discussion over there. I am actually out of town. This is a pre-recorded cast that is releasing on Saturday. So I'm not going to leave you guys short on cast for the week. But since I wasn't able to do my live discussion time, I figured I would do it this way. So share that page around. Go hit it up with any questions that you might have. And I will see you guys over there. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next cast next week.